I started off on wireless communications, but I came to realize that the same type of tools and principles could be applied to understand a much more complex network, a much more complex system, which is the brain. And that fascinated me. It's uh, basically a supercomputer in our life that we have very little understanding of. People used to say, well, space. Space is the fi final frontier. Um, but really, compared to what we know about the brain, we know so much more about space. Uh, the, the brain is something that each of us has, but we really know relatively little about how it works when everything's normal and what goes wrong when things go wrong. The applications are uh, uh, enormous and have you no know, immediate sort of relevance and impact. My own research sort of is driven by things that have some direct societal meaning uh, for me, particularly in the area of mental health and mental health uh, research and care. So we want to know how we can quantify in a data evidence-driven way uh, characterizing conditions such as you know, autism spectrum disorder or major depressive disorder uh, addiction and, and so on. Our labs developed uh, a new way of characterizing leakage of the blood-brain barrier with unprecedented resolution. And the way we did it is we um, applied some of the principles that are used in compression of movies and things like that we apply those principles to the actual acquisition of MRI uh, data, and we were able to achieve comparable um, improvements in resolution, in our case, factor of 30, uh, to characterize very, very nuanced uh, defects in the blood-brain barrier. One main uh, area that we're interested in is developing uh, brain-machine interfaces. If somebody's paralyzed, meaning they have a spinal cord injury, they can still think or imagine movement, but they cannot communicate that to the muscles. So a major direction in our lab is to build brain-machine interfaces that can convert somebody's thoughts by using mathematics into an action that then we can use to move a robotic arm for them, to basically restore normal functions to these patients. My research really focuses on making magnetic resonance imaging faster and better. So what we are really trying to do is to apply uh, signal processing theory to actually ask the question, how can we improve getting these samples from the MRI scanner? How can we design that? We're able to do things now that would allow a multi-hour experiment to be done in a matter of minutes. With these types of increases in speed, we're really able to do new science that we were never able to do before, and we're able to detect diseases and monitor responses to therapies and things like that in ways that weren't possible before. We develop a, a piece of software called BrainSuite, uh, which allows you to take magnetic resonance images of the brain and automatically extract representations of the different brain structures. And one of the applications that we currently work on is epilepsy. In particular, we're interested in, in, in finding small abnormalities in the brain that can't be seen by visual inspection of an MR image. So we've developed computational techniques that will analyze the cerebral cortex, the outer layer of the brain, and can automatically detect these. Generally, our goal is to produce some dramatic improvement in our ability to understand human health and disease. And when you have a goal like that, um, it's very easy to become innovative. One of the hallmarks of a really good electrical engineer is the ability to think outside the box. And if you're exposed to all these ideas from different disciplines, whenever you come up against a, a new problem, you're able to draw on that vast a collection of experiences to come up with solutions that maybe no one has ever thought of before. These are all uh, new fr frontiers of research that I think engineers can significantly contribute to. It really fascinated me that I could bring in the same types of tools. Instead of decoding a wireless signal, decode the brain signal. We've been working for the last several years to actually you know, develop these very first in the world type of uh, techniques. It's enabling us to do, you know, wonders with, you know, making human lives better. We want to contribute towards better healthcare, right? Really, that's, that's the ultimate uh, big picture goal. And that gives me the most satisfaction knowing that what I do could potentially one day help a paralyzed patient or somebody who has some sort of other neurological disorders. Even though I'm an electrical engineer, I'm not a doctor by any means, but uh, I can still make an impact on people's lives. So that's really what gets me going, and that's why I do what I do.